I was absolutely criticized by everybody. Everybody, like everybody in my life was like, what are you doing, man? Like that was probably the ultimate life-changing experience to, to that point in my life where I understood like, wow, okay. Like doing hard things is really important because I, I learned so much about rejection, about just being mentally resilient, about adversity, right? About how like making money and then like the classic burnout when you make money and then blow it all and, and then stall out and zero for a while. Like I learned a lifetime of sales lessons in one summer, which was badass. Problems are what? Problems are profits! What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here, and in today's video, we've got another best of moments from the Problems and Profits podcast with Adam Martin. You guys know Adam Martin from my wholesaling business, the YouTube channel. Well, in today's video, we dive a little bit deeper into Adam's backstory as well as just exploring, you know, what was it like to kind of drop everything, drop his old life and come join my team, especially when my team wasn't necessarily what it looks like today. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, smash the like button, hit subscribe and make sure you jump over and subscribe to the Problems and Profits podcast. A few years ago now, you made a very bold decision to drive all the way out to London and uh, talk to this guy named Matt McKeever here and start working for him. So what drives you to have the confidence to make those sorts of bold decisions and how can others um, also take that sort of level of action that, that you've taken in a lot of your business decisions up to this point? Um, I, I think I've approached a lot of these decisions from a position of, of um, you know, whatever it takes was sort of my mentality at that time. And I was also in a position where I didn't really have a lot to lose. I've always been fairly confident in my abilities to secure another role in, with regular society. So, you know, at the time I was leaving a sales job that would have easily gotten me, you know, $100,000 a year if I just committed to it properly. Uh, and if I stayed there, you know, that would be almost my certain future. But I also knew the ease at which I was able to find myself in those positions where I could accept roles like that. So, you know, the worst case was that I failed doing something that I really wanted to do, trying to take advantage of something I really wanted versus failing at something I wouldn't even like, right? I'm not sure who it is uh, that we're supposed to be quoting having said that, but there's somebody out there that says, don't fail something for don't fail at doing something you don't like. It just doesn't make any sense. So I've really taken that to heart and taken a whatever it takes approach to, to life. And it's never treated me bad. I mean, there's been times where I had no money and was definitely terrified, but there's also been times where I wake up and decide it's time for another Rolex and I can just make it happen. And that's, it, it's largely a risk management thing. But like, if you don't have a whole lot to lose, like I was 24 when I made that decision to join Matt and just like drop everything. And uh, I didn't have a whole lot to lose at that time. And I was willing to risk it all. And largely I still am because what's the, like, what's the worst that can happen? If you go all in, the worst that's going to happen is you fail and you learn a shitload about what not to do the second time. And it's way easier to start the second version of something than it ever is to get those first words on the page, right? Or to start a new story. Like it's very difficult to do that, but the second time around is so easy. Awesome. Um, so before moving on to the second question there, Adam, I'd like to build upon what you were talking about there first. One of the more interesting challenges that I'm faced with right now is that we're at the most eloquent and beautiful time that ever has existed for both technology and market conditions and regulatory freedom and everything in that sense in our industry of the business that I'm running. So we're obviously doing real estate wholesaling for anybody that doesn't know. And, you know, to me, this is absolutely the Goldilocks zone of of where this industry will ever be. Like it's the, it's the most favorable conditions I think we'll ever see. And so one of my current challenges that I'm actively seeking um, mentorship, advice, solutions uh, on is that, you know, I, I've got a team of 
very motivated individuals that are our salespeople. And we've got a really stable foundation underneath them, which are our admin staff and the people that make sure all the details get handled. But I've also got this challenge where I feel like there's a tidal wave of business and I don't feel like we're capturing even the most minor fraction of it. And, and we are sort of industry leaders even. And I, I find that to, to be an interesting statement when I look at how, um, how we're leading, right? Like we're, we're actually not capturing the majority of the market. And so when I think of the best businesses out there, most of them run as, and, and they'll never let you say this, but most of them run like monopolies, okay? Or, um, or, um, or, or like there's a couple other players. Was this an olig oligopoly? <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, like an oligarchy or something like Oligar that. Oligarchy, yeah, whatever the word is. But anyways, when there's just a couple companies and like that's how the best businesses run because they don't have competition. And right now I feel like our company is in a position where it, it could easily have real competition. We're not monopoly uh, power states yet. And so... I think one of the biggest challenges for me is, is trying to reconcile the reality of how people actually work from like a, just a human condition perspective and, and the growth of the business. Like how, how fast and how far do you take the business without incurring unintended consequences? versus going deep on the team that you've got, right? Or on, on the structure that you've got, maybe not even necessarily the team, but the business model that you have. So uh, it's been a very enlightening process, just thinking about solutions here. It's been an enlightening process, taking the time to actually write this book because it's forcing me to put onto paper what I know to be truths, but what if I ask myself, honestly, if I was practicing the truth that I'm putting to paper, uh, if I'm actually doing those things and some of them, it's just no, right? Like some of them I would have to say, no, I'm not following my own advice on some of these things. So I really do believe that the answers are always going to be simple. And, you know, some of the things that I've put on paper for this book absolutely answer my problem, right? They tell me exactly what I should do. And these are things that I know, but it's, I don't know, it's so easy to get caught working in the business rather than working on it. And I think that's the biggest actual problem here. It's not that my team doesn't perform. In fact, they perform pretty well. Um, it's the fact that if I don't spend the, the right amount of time working on things that really matter, like growth strategies and, and figuring out how to drive new revenue streams and how to drive capturing more of this market, um, it, it, it just doesn't inherently happen, right? And so that's another one of those truths like about culture and about businesses is and just people in general, we don't just grow. In fact, we actually just sort of slowly die if left unchecked. So um, yeah, that's a deep one. That was the deepest of all of them. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate I that, Adam. I think uh, just a few thoughts that I can't help myself adding to it and then we'll wrap mm -hmm. up. But uh, I think sometimes people underestimate the intimidation that can come from not having competition and being in a blue ocean that the stress of seeing a huge opportunity and not making as much progress as you'd like, because it, it can literally feel like whatever, pick your, what, what you want, but like you walk into Eden, but you've got no <laughs> baskets and you're like, this is awesome. But like, I can only carry so many, so much fruit, so many apples, so much, whatever. And I actually need to like, you know, stop just trying to grab with both hands and maybe like build a plan, Fashion take my time, <laughs> like come together with a real uh, roadmap here. And it can be panic inducing almost at times where you're just like, man, I just need to like do it. Like someone else is going to catch on to this. Like there's no moat, there's no any protection here. It's just literally wide open. It's an unwalled city. And I just happen to be the first here. And I think sometimes people spend way too much time working in the business, hoping that they can literally just pick every tree bare before yeah. anyone else comes into the city. And it just, it, it's rare that that's going to happen. It's actually not necessarily the first mover advantage. It's like the first person that gets in there, like you said, and can really dominate and carve out um, real market share. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And there's so much truth in there. And, 
and yeah, I think, yeah, it, it's a tough problem. And like, honestly, it, it is not really as widely talked about. Like it's not as often that we find ourselves in a situation where you have the opportunity to grab a monopoly and you have to then figure out how to most often there is some sort of monopoly that you're trying to compete with. And that's where a lot of the business talks and business books are, are largely oriented. But the thing about, you know, find yourself in found, finding yourself looking at a potential situation where you can grab so much opportunity is like everyone else will easily look at that as well. Right? Like it's not as if those opportunities last a very long time. And uh, we also do suffer in our industry from uh, one of the easiest things for people to figure out in, in business, which is just low levels of barrier to entry. There's almost none. In fact, I don't think there is any really. There's, there's not many. And there's force multipliers that we take advantage of. Like we've already achieved some revenue and so therefore we can actually afford to outmarket some of our competitors and, and generally outpace some of the newest guys. But it's not to the degree that somebody couldn't catch us at this point. And so that I think is probably one of my biggest challenges and concerns that I do think about. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited that I've taken, I've taken the last kind of few days to just buckle down, put my phone on, do not disturb and, uh, and really think about some of these challenges and get them on, on paper for, kind of the world to see and you just you think differently when you know it's it's sort of the Hawthorne effect at work here where you, you behave differently when you know other people are observing you and so I guess one of the challenges that I gave myself is I just gave you a deadline for when I was going to do my stuff I missed the first one naturally you always do but I gave myself a second deadline and I'm like hey you can't miss two that's ridiculous and so um you know I'm going to meet that deadline no problem and uh and that's, you know, one of those interesting things. I just like force myself into a situation where there's no real out. Okay, so just do the hard work. And that's usually where the solutions lie. It's just doing the thing, even if it sucks. Thanks again to Adam for taking the time to shoot this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. If you want to listen to the entire unedited video, jump over to the podcast, grab the episode, make sure you subscribe and leave us a written review and a five star rating. We'd really appreciate it. And there's a lot more where this came from. So make sure you jump over and subscribe to the podcast. Problems are what? Problems are profits.